In this video, I'll show you how to animate a logo in Premiere Pro. Hi everyone, I'm the Web Guru and I create tutorials on video, photography, and audio to make you a better editor. So if you like the video, be sure to leave a comment and subscribe to the channel and notifications. So let's talk about animating a logo. I like to start off in Photoshop. And what I've done is I have opened the logo and I've separated it into separate layers. And then I've also created a background layer, which is just plain white. And then another thing that I've done is I've gone to image canvas size, and then I've increased the canvas to 1920 by 1080, which matches my video resolution. And that will save you some time. Now let's go over into Premiere Pro and I need to import the Photoshop file. So I'm going to choose File, and then Import, and then I'm gonna to go to the Photoshop file, and then there are actually four options inside the Import As menu. If you wanna learn more about those, I've actually created a video on that topic. In this case, we're gonna choose Sequence, and that will bring all of the Photoshop layers and place them into a sequence. So I'm gonna click on OK. Now here in the project panel, you'll see a folder or a bin with the same name as the Photoshop file. I'm gonna open it by clicking on the triangle. I recommend you do this in list view, which is this button right here, as opposed to icon view. It'll be a little bit easier. You'll see all of the Photoshop layers and then there will be a sequence. You can recognize the sequence by the special icon here. Double click it to open it in the timeline, and now you can see all of the Photoshop layers inside of a Premiere Pro sequence. So this is great. And now we can start animating. You can also click on the little eyeball icons here in Premiere Pro to turn the layers on and off. Now we're gonna start off by animating the web layer and I'm gonna actually select the other two layers and I'm just gonna drag them out of the way for now. So that way I can focus on the web layer. And what I'd like to do is for it to move onto the screen. So make sure you've selected the clip inside of the timeline. Then we're gonna go to the effect controls panel. If you're not able to find it, simply go to window and then effect controls and then it'll show up on your screen somewhere. And we're gonna be animating the position property. If for some reason you can't see the position property, then click on the triangle next to the word motion, and that should reveal it. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to move this playhead, and actually there's a mini timeline here that's linked to the main timeline. So here in the mini timeline, you can move the playhead to the very beginning of the clip, and then in order to start animating something, you need to click on the little toggle animation button. So it looks like a little stopwatch. So right next to the word position, I'm gonna click on the toggle animation button. That will automatically create a keyframe. It looks like a little diamond inside of the timeline. Now this represents the starting position of the word web. There are two values for position. The first one is the horizontal, the second one is the vertical. So I'm going to actually reduce the horizontal position until the word web is just off screen like that. Then I'm gonna go a little bit later in time, about half a second, and then I'm gonna click on the reset parameter button. And then this will move it to its original position. So now we have two keyframes. The first one is off screen, and then the second one is on screen, and there's a smooth animation between them. So if I play it, you can see that the word web moves onto the screen. So this is great. So now let's do the same thing to the word guru. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the playhead to around one second, and then I'm gonna move the next clip into place. Make sure it's selected in the timeline. And then I'm gonna to go to the effect controls panel, make sure your playhead is at the beginning of the clip. Then next to the word position, click on the toggle animation button. 
This will create the first keyframe. And now I'm going to change the position. I'm going to move the word guru off the screen, but to the other side in this case. Then I'm going to move the playhead a little bit later in time, about half a second. Then I'm going to click on the reset parameter button. That'll bring it back to its original position. So again, we have two keyframes, one where it's off screen and then another one where it's on screen. And now it'll create a smooth animation between the two keyframes. Now, if I want to slow the animation down, I can move the keyframes further apart like that. And now it's a slow animation. If I want the animation to go faster, I can move the keyframes a little bit closer together like that. And then it'll move a little bit faster. Now, if we want to see the full result of this down in the timeline, I'll go to the very beginning of the timeline. And now I can see the word web and then guru come onto the screen. And I might even speed up Guru a little bit more. And so that looks good. So now I'm going to go to around two seconds. And then I'm going to bring the W into position like that. Now with the W, I want to do something a little bit different. Rather than just changing the position, I want to change the scale and the rotation. So this is a little bit more advanced. So with the W selected, or with any clip selected, I'm going to show you what happens when I change the scale value. So the scale starts off at 100. That just means regular size. If I increase the scale, it gets bigger. If I decrease the scale, it gets smaller. But there's something weird happening here. In addition to it getting bigger and smaller, it's also moving. And this is because of something called the anchor point. So click on the word motion to see the anchor point. And then you'll be able to see it on the screen here in the program monitor. The anchor point is a circle with some crosshairs through it. And the issue here is that when you scale or rotate something, it's relative to the anchor point. So the W is over here, but its anchor point is over here. So that's going to cause some problems and create some confusion. But it's easy to fix it. I'm simply going to drag the anchor point to the center of the W like that. And now when I scale it, it'll scale from its own center, which looks much more natural. So let me reset that for now. Now let's start animating it. Make sure your playhead is at the beginning of the timeline. Then next to the word scale, we're going to click on the toggle animation button. That'll create the first keyframe automatically. And I'm going to set the value to zero. That will essentially make the W invisible. We can't see it. Then I'm going to go a little bit later in time, about half a second. And then I'm going to click on the reset parameter button. And now the W will come back onto the screen. So I have two keyframes that go from zero to a hundred. And so I already have a smooth animation there. So that looks pretty interesting. And now in addition to scaling it, I would like to rotate it at the same time. So I'm going to go to the beginning of the clip and then I'm going to click on the toggle animation button next to rotation to turn animation on. Now rotation starts off at zero and rotation is measured in degrees. So if I want to do one full rotation, then that would be 360 degrees. If I want to do two full rotations, that would be 720 degrees. So the math is a little bit different. Um, so I want it to start off at zero, so I'm not going to change anything. And then I'm going to go up about half a second. And then I'm going to manually type in a value of 360. And then Premiere will change it to one rotation. And now I can see that it scales and it rotates at the same time. So that looks interesting. Now right now it's doing one full rotation. If I wanted it to do two rotations, I need to change it from 360 to 720. So I need to go back to the keyframe to change the value. Now this is where you need to be careful. You can't just click on the keyframe and change the value. What I recommend is that you use these white arrows to go from keyframe to keyframe. And then you want to move to the keyframe and then change the value. So I'm going to type in 720. Premiere will change that to two rotations. And now it scales and it rotates two times. So that looks interesting. And once you understand these techniques, you'll be able to create 
keyframes for position, scale, rotation across all of your layers and create some really cool and interesting effects. Now, one last thing is that once I go to the end uh, at around five seconds, I want all of the clips to end at the same time. So all I'm gonna do is I'm going to trim them by dragging their edges so that they all end at the same time. And now I have a simple, um, interesting animation that ends at around five seconds. So if you're a beginner, this might be enough for you. If you wanna learn some more advanced techniques, I'll show those to you as well. So first of all, let's talk about easing. So you'll notice that the word web comes to a very sudden stop and I would like it to end more smoothly. So I'm gonna click it in the timeline then inside of the Effect Controls panel, I'm gonna to go to the second keyframe, right click, then choose Temporal Interpolation, Ease In. And now it'll come to a smoother stop. It'll basically decelerate before it stops, rather than just stop suddenly. Then I'm gonna do the same thing for the word Guru. So I'm gonna click on the Guru clip in the timeline. Then I'm gonna to go to the second keyframe, right click, Temporal Interpolation, Ease In, and now that will also come to a smooth stop. So that makes it a little bit more professional. Another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a vignette to the background. So I'm gonna select the background, and then I'm gonna to go to the Lumetri Color panel by choosing Window, and then Lumetri Color. This will bring up the Lumetri Color panel, I'm gonna go all the way down to the bottom. I'm gonna click on the word vignette. And then the amount I am going to reduce until I see a little bit of shading around the outside edge. It's a little bit hard to see, but if I toggle the effect on and off, you can see that it adds a little bit of depth and dimension to the outside of the frame. And then another more advanced technique is called nesting. So once the logo comes together at the end, I want to move the entire logo off the screen. And I want the entire logo to move off. So what I can do is I can select all three of the layers for the logo. I will not include the background. Then I'm going to right click and I'm going to nest them. I'm going to just call this logo nest. And now you'll see that all three of the layers get nested inside of a single clip. Now this is actually a nested sequence, but it behaves like a clip. And now what I can do is I'm gonna go to Window Effects, and then there's a Video Transitions folder. I'm gonna open that, and then I'm gonna go to the Slide folder. There's a transition called the Push. So I'm gonna take the Push transition, and now you can see that the entire logo is going to go off the screen. There's also another uh, cool transition called the cross zoom. So I'm going to open up the zoom folder. I'm going to go to the cross zoom. I'm going to drag that over top of the push. And now the logo will come flying off the screen, which looks pretty interesting. I'm also going to double click the transition and I'm going to change it to 15 frames, which is around half a second then I'll click on OK. And now you can see the entire logo comes onto the screen one element at a time and then goes flying off the screen. So here's a simple animation that you can create with keyframes and you can become very creative in these techniques and do some very cool and interesting things. So I hope that was helpful to you. Leave a comment if you liked the video or if you have any questions and be sure to subscribe to the channel and for notifications and keep learning and growing and I'll see you next time.